So, my name is Felix. Today we're going to be talking about some type level arithmetic in Haskell. Um, as a very brief overview of this presentation today, today we're going to add two numbers together. Um, it doesn't really sound like much, but I think you'll agree with me at the end uh, that there's a lot more work involved in it than you'd initially think. Um, but first of all, what actually is Haskell? Because I know a lot of people here might have done Haskell in the past, but a lot of people might not have. Um, it's a programming language, first of all. It's got a lot of really nice features, but there's two that are kind of going to be important today. Firstly, it's a purely functional programming language. So in Haskell, everything is a function, even numbers, literally everything is a function. And programs get constructed from definitions of these functions, essentially. Um, another thing that you'd notice if you look at a Haskell program is that recursion is often used to achieve what loops do, because loops are a very imperative programming structure, and we're not doing imperative programming today. Um, another feature of Haskell is that it's statically typed, so all types must be decided at compile time. Haskell is quite well known for having a very, very strong, robust type system. And today we're going to be kind of exploring just how strong that type system is. Um, but yeah, first of all, you know, people haven't seen Haskell before. Let me show off a little bit of a Haskell program in case you're not sure, because it can look a bit like an alien language. So this is just a normal Haskell program. Uh, and this mysearch function is getting successor of a number. So all we're doing is defining a function that adds one to a number, essentially. Um, what we have on this line is a function signature, and this is saying that mysearch is a function which takes a num and returns another num. And as you can see, in our implementation of it, it's taking in a num that we're calling n, and it's returning n plus one. Um, equally, we have another function here uh, which adds two numbers together. It does it in a very strange way, and I hope that hopefully later on in this talk, you'll see why it's defined in such a strange way, but we're doing it inductively. Um, first of all, we define our base case for addition, where you add zero to something and you get that something back. And then second of all, when you add two numbers together, one of which isn't zero, you are minusing one from the first one, then calling my add again, and then adding one again at the end. And what this, is, what this will do is basically, as you minus one, it'll eventually reach the base case. So for example, we have a stack here where we're passing in three and three. What happens is you, you ask it to add together three and three. It then calls an add to two and three, one and three, zero and three, at which point it reaches the base case. And then it calls the mysuck function on that until we get six. Hopefully, that kind of makes sense. So normally, when you look at a programming language, you, you're presented with this sort of model. Um, you have values, and those values have types. Haskell goes a step further. Uh, the, it also has something called kinds, which is essentially what, a, a type for a type. The base Haskell kind system is fairly basic. Um, I'll go in a little bit more into it later. But you know, when you, when you first start out with Haskell, you can, for the most part, ignore the kinds. You can kind of just think, OK, I have values. Those values have types, and I'm doing computation in my values. Um, but like I said, kinds are basically types for types. So there's the same sort of relationship between a value and a type as there is uh, between a type and a kind. So hypothetically, bear with me here. What if we moved our computation up here? If we did our computation in types, then we can have some interesting results because all type resolution is done at compile time because Haskell is a statically typed language. So Haskell has a lot of things that other programming languages have that you take for granted, like a standard library. It has built-in types that do certain things, like numbers. It has trues, falses, pluses, minuses. Um, but when we move up to the type level, we can forget all about that because type level, that, that there is no standard library for these things. We're going to have to define everything from scratch. Uh, let's, let's have a look at this function that we defined earlier in our, in our little demo. Um, first of all, if we, if we want to redefine this at the type level, there's one big problem, first of all. What is an int? We don't have ints anymore. Like I said, we have no standard library. We're going to have to define these things from scratch. So when we create our own terms on the type level, there's kind of two steps to doing this. First of all, we summon a meaningless constant from the void. We can call it whatever we like. It's just a constant. Sounds a bit daunting, but then we need to imbue it with meaning, which is essentially, uh, you know, you have a value, you create functions which use that value in some way. So, for example, if you have, if we take booleans as an example, true and false don't really mean anything by themselves. It, they only really mean something when you have functions that accept true and false as what you would expect them to be. 
Um, before we continue, th this is not stuff that is defined in the Haskell 98 standard. Uh, that, was, that standard was quite a while ago, and since people have made a lot of extensions to the Haskell language, so today we're going to be using these Haskell extensions. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at, first of all, how can we define numbers at the type bubble? Um, we're going to do it in a very mathematical way. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to do it inductively, as before. We have zero, and then we have success of something. So at the type level, we use the keyword data to create a constant. Um, and what we can see is that since this is at the type level, we can ask the Haskell interpreter to get the type of things for us. So uh, let me just load this in. If we do type undefined Z, the reason why it's undefined, I'll explain a little bit more later, um, we get Z back. So this is essentially like if you had a Python interpreter and you typed in zero and it spits zero back at you. Fairly simple. Uh, we can do the same where we can create things like SZ, which is like our one because it's a successor of zero and we get the thing back. In the same way, S, S, Z is two, etc. So we've defined these numbers at the type level and we can get the types of these things. Um, you might be thinking to yourself, what if you try and get the type of just S by itself? That, if you think, that doesn't really make any sense. It's like asking for the, the what the value of plus one is. It doesn't make any sense. So what we get is what appears, it calls itself a kind error because it is, but it's on the type level, we can think of this like a type error because uh, like it's saying, it's expecting something of kind star, but it gets something of kind star to star. To explain kinds a little bit further, something that's a concrete data type in Haskell has kind star. Something that's a data constructor has type star to star to star, depending on how many things need to be passed in to construct it. So what we're getting here, it calls itself a kind error, but in our language, it is a type error. Um, so yeah, so you can see once we instantiate something with type s, it has type star. Whereas if we just call the constructor s without anything extra, it has kind star to star. Sorry, I said type a second ago, I meant kind. So we've solved the first part. We now have an equivalent of numbers uh, to, to get into the next part. Uh, but now we have another problem. We've, we've summoned our meaningless constants from the void, but we haven't imbued them with meaning. Plus means absolutely nothing to us yet because we don't have a plus function. As you can see, there is quite a lot involved in adding two numbers together, a lot more than you might expect at the start. Um, so let's try and define our successor function on the type level. So first of all, in type level Haskell, when you want to translate a function signature, um, we use the class keyword. Now, the, cl the word class may mean a few things to you if you've ever programmed in any object-oriented language before. Forget all about what that means. We've moved up into a different paradigm. Class here tells us that this is a function signature. And what this is telling us is that it takes a value that we're calling i1, and it returns another value that we call i. Um, and in, in all of these, you'll see that we're repurposing our last parameter um, as a return type. And this might make a little bit more sense to you if you've ever done prolog before. If not, just bear with. The last thing is what's getting returned in quotes. Um, what, the reason that we have this here is because we need to show a data dependency to Haskell. <coughs> we're saying that the value i that we're outputting is dependent on the thing that we pass in i1. So again, let, we need to do this inductively because Haskell's fun like that, especially type level Haskell when our numbers are defined inductively. So we have the instance keyword, which implements an instance of a function, a function in quotes, sorry. So our, our first case, as we saw right at the start, we don't actually have that there. If, as you would expect, we need to add zero to something. If we're adding, uh, sorry, we're not adding. We need to get the successor of zero. So if you want to get the successor of zero, you just wrap S around it, as you'd expect. And then we have the inductive case, where we are taking something that is already the successor of something and wrapping it again. We also have this thing down here. Um, this, uh, I'm gonna kind of skim over these details, but because we are actually evaluating our type level functions through the type checker, we need to instantiate some value which has the type of the function that we've defined. So undefined is a thing in Haskell. It is a, a bit of data that means nothing, but you can instantiate it to have any type you want. So what we're doing is we're instantiating 
undefined as the type of the function that we've just created. And then we can pass that into our type checker. So, for example, if we see these other things here, if we try and get the successor of z, I'm sure you you wouldn't be surprised to find that we get fz. If you and you you know these these are functions as well, so you can chain them together. If you do successor of successor of fz, you get our equivalent of three s s s z. So yeah, that's what I was talking about. When you type these things in. It works as you'd expect. It's kind of cool. It's a lot of work just to do that, but oh well. Um, so yeah, we've done it. We've, we've defined our successor function. But the problem is we've done all of this without actually defining what addition is, which was the whole point of this whole thing in the first place. So how do we define what addition is, is another question. Um, let's look back at our original addition function. It has two cases. When you add zero to something, you get that thing. When you add two numbers together, you have to do a recursive call. Now, to do a recursive call, we're going to have to do a little bit more work. So if we take a look at this, um, we have our number definitions. We have our function signature as well here. I talked a little bit about the data dependencies earlier. The reason that we have two data dependencies here is because, um, you know, as you'd expect, the output relies on the two inputs, but also for our inductive case, uh, for our base case even, sorry. Um, we're outputting I2, and therefore that depends on everything else that's passed in. So yeah, as you'd expect, the base case is fairly simple. If you pass in zero and something else, it returns that something else. Now this bit is a little bit harder. So for our inductive case, we need to do a recursive call, uh, as we did before. And the way that we show a recursive call at the type level is by using uh, this sort of equals comparator symbol, uh, which Norm, in normal Haskell shows a type constraint, and we can kind of think about this as a value constraint in that we've moved up from types to values. So what we're doing here is what gets passed into the function is something that is SI1 and something that is I2. We are then using this, con this value constraint to, to use a recursive call to calculate the value of I, and then we are returning the successor of that I. It might make a little bit more sense why we implemented addition so strangely in the first place, uh, in the first demo, but it's kind of the easiest way to do it in type level Haskell. Um, and again, we can type some things into the Haskell interpreter, and we see that if we try and add zero to something, we get that thing back. If we try to add one to one, we get two. If we try to add one to two, we get three. Amazing. What I haven't shown here as well is that you can chain other functions that we've defined into it. So you could say, for example, run this and then wrap the suck function around it, and you'd get four. So yeah, we have actual functions now. Ta-da. <laughs> it wasn't difficult, right? All of you completely understood that, I'm sure. Uh, why, though, <laughs> is an excellent question. Why would you ever, ever want to put yourself through the pain of doing this for absolutely no reason when there's a plus symbol already there for you? Um, there's a couple of reasons why doing type level programming is useful. First of all, um, like I said, type checking takes place at compile time um, when you're compiling in Haskell, whereas uh, normal functions take place at runtime, obviously. So if you wanted to, say, make sure that there were that you didn't have invalid code, you could run a type level routine which checks that the things that you've passed into a function are valid. Um, second of all, it's cool. Who wouldn't want to do cool stuff? Um, if you're more interested in what else you can achieve with this, I told a little bit of a lie at the start. There is a standard library for this. Um, someone painstakingly wrote it. There are several standard libraries for this, actually. Um, so you can more easily implement some tight level stuff than this, abstract away a lot of the unnecessary details. Um, you can also do cool things like implement lambda calculus in type level programming. Uh, if, you, if you ever want to read through the type level arithmetic, page on the Haskell wiki, I'll give it a recommend. Um, this is also very similar to C++ metaprogramming, if you've ever come across this, and if you've done that before, you, you might have recognized a couple of things. Um, but yeah, that's also worth having a look into. There's a couple of cool papers that this was based on. So first of all, Fun with Functional Dependencies is a good paper. It gets a little bit technical, but it explains the base concepts quite well. Type level instance insanity is a good one just because it gives you a really good introduction on how to construct these sorts of things. So it takes the solution for the, for the instant insanity puzzle that was in some textbook and translates it to the type level. 
Um, there's also this blog post called Typing the Technical Interview, which is a really good read, and it's written like some sort of crazy medieval novel. Thank you. Any questions? That's the most complicated uh, thing that you've seen up to five that you've seen with. Uh, that I've seen? Well, the thing is, not a lot of people bother to do this sort of thing. Um, there seems to be one guy in particular who just keeps making random things at the type levels. Did like the lambda calculus thing. He also implemented a quick sort at the type level. Yeah, it's kind of unnecessary to do anything that complicated. Um, but it's kind of cool. Yeah. What's the most complicated thing you've done at the type level? Bro? This presentation. <laughs>